Welcome to the Return on Lifestyle podcast with Ray Descalzo from Pravada Wealth Management. In this podcast, we help you overcome financial worries and make sense of planning, investing, insurance, and banking. Join us for this journey as Ray draws from his expertise and interviews brilliant minds to help you enjoy life. The best is yet to come. Hi, and welcome to the Return on Lifestyle podcast. Where do I look? We're a little new at this whole thing, but welcome. We're glad to have you here. As you can see, we're in our new office. It's quite not decorated yet. You can't see it, but off screen, I've got all my plaques and accolades, family pictures and so forth, and uh, we're getting set up. Coming along nicely. We're here in Suite 208 now as we're recording this, but that's not important. What's important is we want to talk to you about some timeless principles of investing that I think are extremely important. My name is Ray Descalso. This is Return on Lifestyle Podcast, and I'm here with Jared Coffin, my colleague and sometimes host here, or co-host. Uh, how are you doing today, sir? Doing good. Thank wonderful, you. Wonderful. Wonderful. So today what I want to talk to you is I want to talk to you about how the news drives your investment performance. Now, I know that sounded very, very, uh, what's the word, dramatic, but the reality is, is the news is something you need to ignore. That's my whole thesis for the rest of this conversation. And what's really cool is, is we have a clock behind me and it just dawned on me, if we have to edit anything, the time will change. So keep track of that time, folks, and you'll see. cool, you know, just jump all around. (laughs) Exactly. We may actually do some time traveling here. So the reason I'm talking to you about uh, the news is because I would say probably one of the biggest phone calls or most frequent phone calls I get um, or perhaps uh, conversations I have during uh, portfolio reviews with clients, or sometimes um, I'll have introductions from my existing clients and we'll do second opinion uh, services. And a second opinion service is where uh, you're introduced to me and I'll give you a second opinion on your investment plan and on the beginnings of your financial plan. And there's so much important stuff to talk about when it comes to your investment plan, your retirement income plan, your tax plan, and your retirement plan, your financial plan. But what people want to talk about most is, well, what do you think about the blah, blah, blah that's in the news? So, you know, right now, as we're recording this, and who knows what the future holds when you finally watch this and we publish it, but right now the big news is the impeachment of Donald Trump, right? Um... But it really doesn't matter what the news is. People ask me, well, what's it going to do you know, if such and such happens? And I'm supposed to know magically um, what kind of effect it will have. And the, and the truth is, is I've got some principles I want to share with you when it, comes to, uh, when it comes to the news. And let me give you some, some stark examples, okay? First of all, when it comes to the news, um, there was a time in 2017, a good three or four month period when... It seemed as though we were ramping up for uh, some kind of a military armed conflict with North Korea. Do you remember? Yeah, remember that? Very well. That was the year of 2017. So let me ask you, Jared, um, what kind of an impact did the Twitter war between, uh, well, actually, I don't think they have Twitter in North Korea. So (laughs) it was a one sided Twitter war where Donald Trump was calling. Kim Jong-un, who, by the way, people say, tell me I look like Kim Jong-un. So thank you very much for that compliment. I'm, I don't know. Is that a compliment? At any, <laughs> I don't think so. At any rate, he's calling him Little Rocket Man, and he goes before the UN and calls him that, I yep. think. I can't remember everything. It's all a haze now. But anyways, people are saying this guy, Donald Trump, or Kim Jong-un, is going to get us into World War III, a nuclear conflict, or at least a military conflict with an enemy who has... Uh, nuclear arms, mm-hmm. and he's five feet away over the DMZ from one of our closest allies. Um, I almost said Samsung, <laughs> South Korea, where they've got a great economy. You know, just an amazing economy. That's why I mentioned Samsung, Hyundai. You know, they are just top of the food chain, doing great things, and here we are risking the chance of blowing them up, and maybe even blowing up California uh, by nuclear bombs. So my question to you, Jared, kind of a pop quiz. How did this imminent nuclear conflict, or at least a military conflict with a a, a nuclear uh, um, arch enemy, how did it affect the market? It basically had no effect. Market just grinded higher, low volatility. Yeah. Yeah. No effect. 
2017 was a fantastic year. Uh, Jared and I were talking about this beforehand, and in 2017, there was no week with a pullback in the S&P 500 greater than 3%. Said another way, we never were down more than 3% from one week to another. We don't know exactly. We, we can run the numbers for you, and, and it'll, uh, I asked Jared, I said, hey, could you find that out? About five minutes before we pressed record, <laughs> I asked him, I said, could you go back to your nerd machine and find out when was the last time we had you know, 52 weeks without a 3% pullback? And he said it would take me a while, and I, maybe it doesn't even exist. I don't know. Th- the point is this. It had no impact at all. 2017 was fantastic, Um, but we didn't know that. You know, we were just as worried. The point is, is if your president is about to go to nuclear war, shouldn't you sell all your stocks and bury your money in lead cans? Because lead, you know, nuclear, right? (laughs) See how I thought that. (laughs) Shouldn't you do that? Yeah, of course you should. But had you done that, you would have missed out on 2017 and everything that the market did, um, and you would have uh, <laughs> really looked kind of silly. Uh, and, and also, where do you get lead cans? I think that's really the yeah. point. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't think they even make lead cans. I think I just made that up, actually. So my point, is, uh, the 2017 Kim Jong-un nuclear war thing is a, a great point. Now, look at impeachment. Um, if you look at the impeachment of, let's just say that Donald Trump gets impeached, will the market crater? I don't know. I, I can't make yeah. a prediction, but I can look back in the past. Did the market crater when Richard Nixon resigned after his, um, was he impeached or was he just, they threatened to impeach him? I can't remember. Uh, maybe wrong. I think he was impeached and then resigned before it was. Before it like went yeah, to the Senate exactly. or something. Yeah. He's like, you know what? I think. Peace out. I'm out yeah. of here. Well, it, it, it really had, it was factored into the market. So the market did not have a massive negative reaction. Then you look at, um, by the market, I mean the S&P 500. Talking primarily about equities, because equities tend to be more sensitive to the news, or at least we think they are, um, and more volatile than bonds in general. Uh, That being said, uh, I always have, whenever I make a statement like that, I'm always like, okay, do I need to uh, do I need to qualify that one more time? I think that's a fair enough statement. I think we can all agree on that. And I think the the numbers would bear me out. Then you take a look at Clinton's impeachment. Mm-hmm. Clinton was impeached. And so if Clinton's impeached, shouldn't the market crater? Well, not only did the market crater, he said, all right, you impeach me. Great. And then we had, you know, 97, 98, 99, 2000. Uh, during his time, uh, in the last few years of his presidency, were the craziest blow-off top. Yeah. That was the tech boom. Now, we always talk about the tech boom, and we kind of like roll our eyes because the tech boom also turned into the tech bust in 2001, 2, and 3. However, had you said, okay, because of the news, because Bill Clinton has been impeached and Washington is a mess, I think I'm going to go ahead and take my money out of the stock market and bury it in my backyard. Uh, had you done that, you would have missed out on uh, all of those great years there towards the end of the 90s. So what's the point? The point is, is all of these big news stories are really just hard to know. While they're happening, it's hard to know whether it's going to make a big difference. When I hit this, did it make a sound? in the? No, it didn't. Okay, no. good. Um, <clears throat> so my concern for you would be, if you're watching the news, now let's talk a little bit about the news. What, and this is a, I didn't ask him, this is a pop quiz for Jared. Let's see how Uh-oh. smart Jared is. <laughs> Jared, how do the news channels and the financial news channels, how do they make money? Uh, I'm a little unsure. <laughs> I, I don't know, I guess. It's a fair keeping question. Keeping people on their toes. Keeping uh, people on the, that's right. So what happens is, is they are making money off of advertising, Right. Here's a key. If it's free, you're the product. Okay, so Facebook, right? Yeah. Which, by the way, love Facebook. You can find us at, I don't know, one of our Provada Wealth uh, Facebook page. Great Facebook page. You can find this content there, too. Um, but if it's free, it's because your eyeball is what's for sale. So when I turn on you know, Fox News Business, CNBC, Bloomberg, I think, has a channel, yeah. you know, whoever it is. 
where they make their money is not because I'm paying my cable bill. They're making money because then a commercial comes on for, oh, Provada Wealth Management. Wow, I should I should give those guys a call. They're so smart. And their podcast is and they're handsome too. So you see that commercial for Provada Wealth Management, you call us up, you become a client and we make money. We pay CNBC, by the way, we don't have any commercials on any of these channels. I'm joking. But a company pays to have their uh their information there. So if no one's watching CNBC or Fox Business or or just the news in general, <laughs> what are they going to charge? So if they're going to have eyeballs, the news had better be interesting. Quite frankly, it needs to be arresting because there's a lot of cool things that I can do with my time. And it also needs to be something that um, that is compelling. You know, it's got to be something that I've got to watch this type of thing. Yeah. And so what that means is, uh, and this is kind of famous saying, if it bleeds, it leads. So you're going to hear a lot of sensational news, whether it's sensationally things are fantastic or oh, the market's hitting all new time highs and here is why, or if the market starts to crater. And yeah. it's super annoying because everybody has a reason why the market goes up and the market goes down. But at the end of the day, they know just as much as you and I know, and the correlation and the causation are not necessarily related. If you drill down to an individual stock, and by the way, we don't like to talk about individual stocks here on this podcast because then we have to you know, just give you all kinds of caveats. But if you go to an individual stock, it's even a, a worse situation because the news, whether it's earnings or whether it's um, a scandal at an XYZ company, uh, oftentimes that news that you think you're hearing for the first time is already baked in. Uh, yeah. Right, because and if it's not, it's going to be within a matter of milliseconds. Right, it's fast it's, trading. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, as an investor, that's a great point. If you're a trader, well, then don't watch this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a trader, you're not watching this podcast, anyways. Traders could care less what we think, um, because they are looking at you know just minutia of detail in split seconds. If you're a high frequency trader, obviously you're not watching this podcast. But if you're an investor and you're concerned about investing over the long term, well, then that news of XYZ company beating earnings, missing earnings, you know, the the um, uh, president was convicted for fraud, uh, the president of that XYZ company, made up company, that news has already been baked in. Oftentimes you'll see insiders buying or selling ahead of news. You, you have no chance. Um, oftentimes buyers uh, buying and selling of insiders is pre-programmed. In other words, they've already yeah. said, we're going to do this. We're going to de-link de ourselves from our stock or we're going to accumulate. Then you also have share buybacks. Yep. Um, you'll have companies going and buying their own shares back and they're just doing it because they don't know what else to do with their money. Oh, and by the way, you know, just because a company's buying its share, shares back, it means nothing. The, that doesn't mean the stock's going to go up. It means that's what they think they should do. And I can give you lots of examples. Call me. I can't do it on a podcast, but I can give you example after example because, you know, share buybacks are like, oh, that's terrible that you're not investing in the economy. You're investing your own stock. And I can show you so many companies where they do that and then they lose 20% because their company goes down. Yeah. It just it makes me laugh. I don't know why. <laughs> kind of a sick pleasure, a little schadenfreude. Point is, fade the news. And I read an article, and I don't know who to give it credit to, but the answer, or what he came up with, I think it was from Capital Group, which is a fund managing company. And I'll try to find that article or that, that uh, white paper, and I'll try to uh, link it on our website, <clears throat> uh, provadawealth.com, by the way. Tell your friends and family. Um, what he said is, is things will happen in the market, and then a few years from now, we'll look back, and it will all seem obvious. And I thought, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. So... In 2007, 2008, 2009, while it's happening, all right, you know, different banks are going under, different brokerage firms, people who give financial advice, I won't name the company, but companies that give financial advice for a living yeah. go out of business in 2008, 2009. Hmm, that's interesting. And then, really, they couldn't see it coming, these smart people. And then, of course, the people on the news, they know why it happened and they know what led to it. What I will say is when it comes to news or when it comes to a car accident, if you're in a car accident, 
what you got to do is get your phone out and record what happened. You got to call the police. You got to call your insurance company immediately because as time fades, you forget the details, right? Yep. And you're like, well, I remember Jared was wearing, he, he had a blue vest on, he had a light blue shirt on, and, and in, in a shirt it said Columbia. So I think he was Colombian or something. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> yeah, it's reversed on the screen yeah. there. <laughs> you got to do that real quick because details fade, and that's the way real life works. But when it comes to financial news, the longer time that you have from an event, the more clear everything becomes. So now when we look back at 2007, 2008, and 2009, we're like, oh, yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. You know, they, they changed to mark-to-market accounting. Do you remember when Christopher Cox said, we're going to change uh, how we are going to value these bonds? Do you remember that day? Because I sure don't. But it turns out that, that was kind of a big deal <laughs> because if, anyways, I won't go into why, but it created a cascade of events. And then all of a sudden things happened. That's pretty concise yeah. <laughs> review of what happened in 2008. But uh, historians are better at explaining to you how the market works than actual people who do what we do. And so let me wrap this up because obviously it's kind of, what's the point then, right? If, if news and earnings and all of this stuff don't help me to invest, then, then what do I do? Well, first of all, Identify yourself as an investor. And if you're an investor, you're looking at five and 10 and 30 year time frames. In five and 10 and 30 year time frames, um, what Alan Greenspan has in his briefcase uh, really isn't that important. If you're a trader, you look at his briefcase as Alan Greenspan walks up the steps to talk to Congress. Yeah, you can trade that information. Good for you. Don't call us. We have no clue what that means. That's on you. But if you're an investor in the big picture, forget it. Forget the news. It's factored in. Okay. So number one, become an investor. Number two, forget the news. Watch it. It's interesting. When yeah. you go to uh, when you go play golf with people and they want to talk about the impeachment or they want to talk about the price of tea in China or they want to talk about Kim Jong Un and they want to have a good life, have an opinion. Don't make investment decisions based upon the news. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's so tempting because the whole wide world out there is set up to sell you advertising and you think it's an investment advice. You think it's impartial. Yeah, it's hard to separate. Everyone thinks they're an investor, thinks they're thinking long term, but they think like a trader because they're seeing the news headlines and like, oh, I got to do something. I got to do something. Well, if your time frame's 30 years from now, what does that matter? <laughs> it basically is like the turtle who sits at home and watches all of these rabbits racing on TV. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, man, yeah. Not what you're built for, okay? Tortoises live 100 years. Rabbits get eaten. You know, they, they, rabbits got to run because they're getting chased. But we're turtles, okay? I didn't say we we're turtle traders. We're <laughs> turtles. That's a little inside joke. Three people got that joke. Google turtle traders. Anyways, the point of my story is is realize that you are in this. You're, you're strong. You're handsome. We believe in you because you're an investor, think long-term. Okay, that's number three or four. I don't know what number I'm on. Number five, we do believe some principles matter. One of those, first of all, is to understand what modern portfolio has taught us, modern portfolio theory has taught us. And number one, that is that allocations matter because there is a trend. <laughs> really, modern portfolio theory is the greatest trend-following advice you can give. Yeah. What's the trend? Big stocks, in other words, XYZ company. XYZ company, they're the companies that, you know, they've got the biggest buildings in town. Their name's on the stadium. Uh, they're things that touch your everyday life. They're in the S&P 500, okay? Big companies tend to be less crazy volatile than small companies. It's just kind of common sense, right? Um, and also what you're going to find is, is that's volatility. What you're also going to find is, is that of big companies all the way, medium and small companies, they're going to have some that are value. In other words, they, they spit off dividends and they basically are not growing like rocket ship. They kind of just, you know, trudge along. Um, and then there's also companies that we call growth companies. And they may not pay such a big dividend, but man, they got, they got hope and hope. There's a lot of good feeling behind what they're doing and they're just skyrocketing off that hope. 
both of those type of companies, value and growth, are great. And both of them will have their day in the sun, right? So sometimes value and dividends are huge and sometimes growth and, and you know, uh, innovation are fantastic. And, and across all different size companies, there's growth and value plays. So big companies and little companies have their day in the sun. Growth companies, value companies have their day in the sun. And then there's also sectors. Sometimes healthcare is the place to be. Mm -hmm. Sometimes utilities are amazing. Just why weren't utilities are fantastic, right? And then sometimes it rotates over to consumer staples. And, and there's this market, there's this market, um, kind of seasonality, I guess we'll call and it. And the business cycle too, where you're at, it depends on what's going to lead. What's yeah. Gonna, and you, you know, can kind of tell lag. where you are in the business mm -hmm. cycle by these sectors. Yep. So those trends that are taught to us by modern portfolio theory are very important and help us to know that, hey, stocks are more volatile and have greater growth than say bonds, right? And bonds are just different. They, they, they have different rules. And so you need some stocks and you need some bonds. And then you need to you need to have a good allocated portfolio. And then we would add we would add something to that. We've said it before, and that is a risk on risk off uh, component. Where the analogy is the weather, right? You look outside and you're like, it's in fact today it's a gorgeous day here in Central Florida. It's like maybe 60 degrees, not no humidity. You know, if I'm on a toll road out in the middle of nowhere, I'm driving 85 miles an hour. Yes, you heard me right. 85 mm -hmm. miles an hour. In fact, I've done it before and I've gotten tickets for it. because Call the cops. <laughs> exactly. But obviously, too, um, sometimes it rains. And when it rains here in Florida in the summers, you know what? Don't even get on the road. You're just wasting yeah. your time because you're just going to be parked. So just stay off. And so we think that it's a really good idea when we enter into crazy market conditions um, to, to have a, a, put your foot on the gas and put your foot on the brake, take more risk, take less risk. And are we perfect? Absolutely not. Now the, the issue though, I would say is, is that having this as a, having these technical indicators that help us to do risk on and risk off overlaid over top of what we talked about with modern portfolio theory gives the long-term investor a behavioral edge. That's it. We may end up uh, at the same value of a portfolio as somebody who just bought the S&P 500 and a couple of bonds and stuff and just forgot they even had the money. But our job is to help you feel confident going forward because we know you're watching the news and we know you're looking at your statement and we know that you need to know that there are guiding principles that are helping us manage your portfolio. Things that are non-emotional, Things that are based not upon the news yeah. or President Trump's latest Twitter, but based upon bigger numbers, longer term numbers and trends that have proven themselves over time. Not perfect. Not at all. But there's principles that can guide us. So basically, again, what I want to say is from from us to you is watch the news, enjoy the news, pop some popcorn, but don't make investment decisions based upon the news. Have a strategy. And if you don't have a strategy or you'd like to learn more about ours, simply click the link below, maybe. I don't know exactly how we're going to do this. Or give us a call. Go to Privada Wealth, P-R-I-V-A-D-A Wealth.com and reach out to us and we'd be happy to uh, sit down with you and talk with you a little bit more. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the Return on Lifestyle podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Pravana Wealth Management. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider for any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. The following program is sponsored by Pravana Wealth Management, which is solely responsible for its content. Advisory services offered through J.W. Cole Advisors Incorporated. Securities offered through J.W. Cole Financial Incorporated. Member IFNRA SIPC. Pravada Wealth Management is an unaffiliated entity from J.W. Cole Advisors and J.W. Cole Financial. The opinions expressed by Ray Descalso should not be construed as specific investment legal or tax advice. All economic and performance information is historical and not indicative of future results. 
Investing may involve the risk of loss of principal. Any tax advice on this show is not intended to be used by any person for the purpose of avoiding U.S. federal or state tax penalties that may be imposed on such person, and each listener should seek advice from their tax advisor or legal counsel on topics that arise from the show. Nothing should be construed as solicitation of an offer to buy securities. The preceding program is sponsored by Pravada Wealth Management, which is solely responsible for its content.